about, uh, we are discussing the thyroid today, uh, specifically hypothyroidism. Uh, there's about 20 million Americans, roughly, that are diagnosed uh, with hypothyroidism, believed to have hypothyroidism. Uh, and that's on the low end. They're actually starting to think that that is much higher because it often goes undiagnosed for so long and that people are actually diagnosed with other things before the thyroid actually has um, comes into play. And there's a, we'll get into why that really happens. So, uh, so with an under-functioning thyroid, that's really what the uh, hypothyroidism is. We start to look at symptoms like the fatigue. That's always what is the, one of the biggest things that people come into the doctor for. I'm tired, I don't know what it is. So they might run a TSH on them, things like that. Um, autoimmune disease, so you get that uh, Hashimoto's, chronic pain, that when we see people coming in, we, we often want to check their thyroids um, or have them, have them do something else to check it. Uh, constipation, your thyroid tells your body how fast and slow to do things, so if you've got hypothyroidism, that means digestion slows down, so that means bowel movements slow down. Uh, other digestive complaints, IBS can be linked to that as well. Asthma and allergies are also linked to the thyroid. As you start looking at uh, you look at inflammatory conditions, and then the, the ability, once you get that fatigue really low, to just perform easy tasks. You know, the day is just hard, so they can't really do even activities of daily living, getting out of bed a lot of times. So then what do they get diagnosed with? Depression. So they get placed on a depression med. So uh, we really need to start looking at why it goes undiagnosed and what we can do about it uh, ourselves whether we ask our doctors more questions or things that we can do to improve our thyroid health. So let's talk about the gland itself. So thyroid gland, a little bit of anatomy here. So it produces a couple of hormones. Okay, predominantly. And it produces four, but two main ones, okay? So thyroid gland secretes T4, and T3, okay? So when somebody runs a TSH, that's actually not your thyroid. That tells your thyroid to do the, to do, to secrete these two. So a TSH really isn't a thyroid hormone. Um, it doesn't tell you what the thyroid is actually doing. Uh, so that's not necessarily, it's not a good starting point for that test, right? So this is about 80% of the secretions. This is about 20%, okay? So, T4 is our inactive form. It's about 300% less active. T3, this is the gas. This is what you want. So uh, the drugs are often T4s. There is a, uh, a medication called Armor. It's pig thyroid, very pig gland. So that's, uh, that's um, T3. A lot of doctors don't like to use it because it is. it can give patients a roller coaster because it's very hard to keep under control. But if you can get somebody, it's actually a better, because you'd actually want to give them that. Because when we find out some things, the thyroid is not always the issue, okay? They, they're not, they're giving you this, but that's, it's something else that's gone. We'll get into more of that. Uh, the, what you need, so the T, tyrosine. Okay, tyrosine is an amino acid, so, Vegetarians, got to get some kind of supplement into them so that they can produce. So vegetarians have an issue. Um, we're not digesting. Last uh, couple of seminars, we're on digestion. So if we're not digesting our proteins. We're not breaking them down to this amino acid level. You can't make thyroid hormone. Okay? So there's another issue where digestion plays a role. Uh, and then you need TPO. So this makes, this makes iodine active, so the goiters, so the salts that we need, so we're all in these low salt diets now because of high blood pressure and heart disease. So is that now starting to create issues there that we've not, we've not salting things? There's actually a book that came out um, the end of last year about why we need salt, we should be salting things. So there really hasn't been a proven high salt <coughs> diet leads to high blood pressure and heart disease. So I'm gonna start asking questions and looking at science. All right, so everybody kind of understand that. Any questions on the thyroid gland? Because we'll be throwing around terms like T4 and T3, especially when we talk about the tests. Yeah? Is there such a thing as not getting enough salt? Yeah, oh yeah, 
a lot of times. My sister never ate salt. Yep. And finally, she ate salt. And that was the point of the book that people were actually okay. getting uh, two less of salt. Yep. Should it be the iodized salt or like the? That would be the yep ideal uh, to get to get the iodine in there. But uh, you don't see a lot of deficiencies in salt because of all the additives and things. So mm -hmm. they're using um, salt. Go ahead. Are, okay, I have a question. Um, I like the organic or like the um, salts that don't have. The, yeah, like sea salt and Himalayan. Yeah, but yep. don't some of them. I think some of them do not have iodine. Yep, they don't. So then you need the iodized. Some in your diet. So, okay. but a lot of the. You're gonna get it through other means, so, mm -hmm. so it's, it's like I said, it's an allergy. Uh, mm -hmm. That makes it a little more difficult, right? So, um, I'll have to look that one up because that one hasn't really See? There because have. because <laughs> an iodine al because an allergy itself um, to something usually to me screams bad gut, so leaky gut. So you have an allergy to something. Whenever you have a food allergy or an elemental allergy, this is going way off course now, so you, know, you pulled me out Sorry. of here, so that's Sorry. okay. I just... So we'll talk about a little bit, because the gut plays a huge role in the thyroid. So when you have a leaky gut and you absorb something, the iodine look like, you didn't, you didn't break it down. You didn't either inactivate it or activate it, so your body attacked it. So there's where the allergy comes from. You created the antibodies to it, just like any other food allergy would occur. It was allowed to pass in through the gut, so you would be a candidate for like a gut health kind of thing, is what we would do. So um, I will definitely look that up and ask some questions to some people. Yeah, I mean, you get, I've had, I've had other patients have weird allergies, give them a supplement that, you know, it's an herb from China and they don't know, they didn't know they had an allergy to it or they it mixed with something else. So yeah. And most of the products are very, very safe. But yeah, it's nice to know allergies that people have. So, yeah, I'm going to look that one up. That's a different one, an iodine allergy. Okay. All right, moving on. So, making the thyroid hormone. What we, we talked about tyrosine. So, we're going to... Iodine. So there's a lot that is needed. <laughs> okay. So these are some of the things that often people are deficient in that are needed to make it. So the protein backbone, right? So that tyrosine is what we need. Iodine, uh, TPO makes this active. Zinc and selenium are needed for the conversion, T4 to T3. Vitamin E helps protect it, antioxidant, right? Magnesium, uh, needed for the enzyme, that TPO, so that's an enzyme. Thiamine B1 helps activation, and ashwagandha is an herb, it's a stress herb. So if we, we'll talk about stress and how that does, ashwagandha is really good for um, helping people with like mental clarity. Um, Physical endurance is another big one for that, but yeah, that's why that's needed. So, uh, so, so these are the things that we will we can test through some of these, uh, especially like selenium can show up and zinc can show up on a um, coverage of metabolic panel. You just have to look within the numbers. Uh, protein, if you look at a comprehensive metabolic panel, and you're looking at protein, so we're looking at that. So those are some of the things that we're looking at if patients are. Um, there's a bunch of protein in their blood, then we know that they're not digesting it, so there's an issue there. Um, magnesium, we always run a red blood cell magnesium, everybody, because people don't like their green leafy vegetables. And a lot, of, it takes about 37 pounds of kale in order for you to get your daily intake of magnesium, so feel free to hunker down on 37 pounds of kale. So, um, selenium, you can get out of a Brazil nut, but not people, a lot of people have nut allergies, so. so um, I always make sure if you have any allergies to, to nuts and people, if they really like uh, Brazil nuts, they'll hunker down on a whole bunch of them and then they'll get selenium toxicity. So you can get toxicity with this and their hair will start to fall out. And I tell them to back it off, so quit doing that. Or they get goofy, tingling, stuff like that. So I had a truck driver who did that. He was like, oh yeah, I'm eating Brazil nuts like mad. Stop. Okay, <laughs> one to two, you're good. That's your daily intake for the day. So he had to pull it way back. 
Uh, B vitamin deficiencies often very high because of low stomach acid, not being able to break down things and absorb it, especially B12. So that brings us to causes. So what are some of the causes? Okay. So this is where it gets really funny because the thyroid is very, very rarely is it like a primary issue. Okay. It's usually caused by something else, some other system in the body that really isn't working the way it should. Uh, we might be stressing too much, our digestion might be off, so we're not creating enough of the substrates, we're nutrient deficient, um, the stomach acid here issue, so there, that's a big one. Um, you can't break down that protein. So when you eat a meal, your stomach acid just go down to about a one, to one or two in the pH scale. So when you think of pH, you have... So you have like one, seven, 14. Okay, this would be water. This is where your stomach should be when you eat a meal, one to two. Okay, most people sit four to five. Okay, and then what is, what is one of the most common medications that's given? Prilosec, uh, PPI, acid reducer, right? So that brings it up above five. So you're not digesting food. Okay, so. You eat a steak, you eat chicken, you eat any kind of animal meat, there's no way you're breaking that down at a four or five. That's why you feel like crap when you eat it. It's like, oh, it just kind of sits there, it doesn't really want to go anywhere. So we need a one, to, one or two down there in order to break that up. Plus, uh, it excretes intrinsic factor for B12, a few other things in there. So you can actually, then when it goes into the small intestine, you can absorb it. So if it doesn't get broken down, there's where our allergies come into it, where we can't break it down, and then you might absorb a big chunk of that protein, and your body's like, hey, that looks like something else, like um, my nerves, so then we get MS, or my joints, so we get rheumatoid, so those types of things. So there's where your autoimmune disease starts to link. Uh, when you don't have enough stomach acid, gallbladder dysfunction starts, and you can't clear um, estrogen and cholesterol, so there's a big issue with that. It also leads to um, anxiety. There's a big there's a, uh, the thyroid pharmacist, Isabella Wentz, um, she's big on stomach acid. So what she found was her energy level increased because why? If you digest your food, you can pull more energy out of it. If you don't, then there's where you get really sluggish and there's another reason for your fatigue. So stomach acid is one of the big ones. Uh, and one of the things that we talked about the last couple seminars, whatever happens in the north, so in your mouth, in your stomach, is going to come out in the south or show up in the south. So there's your IBS, your Crohn's, your, your um, IBD, all those digestive issues that are all coming from probably the top and just working its way down. Uh, one of the other big ones, antibiotics, right? So what do antibiotics kill? Good and bad bacteria, right? So if you don't repopulate with good bacteria, what often grows? Bad bacteria. So we get that dysbiosis, which can lead to that leaky gut and more inflammation. We talked about some of the nutrients. Uh, so zinc deficiency is huge, that's why we run a red blood cell zinc on people. Um, selenium, another big one, B12, certainly if you got low stomach acid. Um, and vitamin E is actually a big one too. This, when you get those deep nutrient deficiencies, then you can't, it leads to, has anybody heard what leaky gut? I've heard that term, right? So, so actually they, you can now test for certain um, molecules in, in uh, urine and blood that can show whether or not you have leaky gut or the presence of it or if you've actually gotten it better because it uh, it's, it's gives off a couple of things called zonulin. Um, there's another one called the gluten. So if you have those, and then if you have an increase of what's called LPS, it's a, when the bacteria produce the toxins, LPS, and that just further makes it worse. And so that leaky gut causes that inflammation. Um, you can't absorb protein, or you can't break down proteins of that gut. It doesn't, there's issues there. So. Um, one of the big issues then with the leaky gut gluten. Okay. Studies show 83% of people will feel better, uh, their thyroid will feel better, they'll actually just feel better um, if they have thyroid issues if they go on a no uh, gluten free diet. Go, go ahead. I have a question about that. Um, I used to do gluten free and mm -hmm. it felt worse. Yep. So because it's all the 
Yep. Don't so, they take out of all that stuff? So when you go gluten free, what I just tell patients is just eat real food, right? I mean that's what it is. I mean you would be gluten free if you ate real food. If you didn't eat breads, the pasta, stuff out of a bag, out of a box, right? You, you wouldn't have to worry about this. So we can't break down we can't break down the um, protein in there, gliadin. It's really hard for us to do, uh, especially in the genetically modified era. The other issue that they they believe, and which is in my mind true, so what they spray on it, right? So it's the pesticides that cause a lot of it, it makes it harder for us to break stuff down and causes more leaky gut. So eat organic, eat real food, there we go. That'd be the easiest thing to do. So gluten, when you when it crosses the barrier, because really when, you, when you're talking about your intestinal tract, it's one cell layer thick. So when gluten goes through, your body goes, hey, that's foreign, we don't like you. That gliadin protein looks like your thyroid. So you actually make uh, antibodies to your to the gluten, but then hey, if it's it's called molecular mimicry, so when something looks like something in your body, then it's going to go and attack your thyroid as well too. Uh, so that's why when you run things, you run antibodies, <laughs> so you don't want to run. All right. So any questions on gluten? Why well, should stay away? So you, you go gluten free for a period of time. Um, with a plan to heal up the gut, okay? Uh, if you don't do this, you, if you stay gluten-free and don't do anything to help heal up the gut, you'll get an allergy to something else. It's usually like dairy, or it'll be something like broccoli, or nightshades, things like that. So, so if you don't figure out why you have that leaky gut, um, you're taking away the thing that's continuing to make it worse, but then you gotta heal it up. So that's where the downfall a lot of times is, and we talked about that in the last seminar. You really gotta, Feel, you gotta, you gotta have a plan to help heal that gut, and that's really what that means. So, all right, uh, stress. Woohoo! Nobody's stressed, right? Okay. So, what's our main stress hormone? Anybody know? Cortisol. What's that? Cortisol. You got it. You've been too too, too many of these. Okay. So, increased cortisol leads to less steroids to make other hormones. So, you, as cortisol increases. You can't make thyroid hormone, right? Uh, you get an immune system overload with stress, and then your adrenal gland will eventually. There, there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue other than Addison's, but it, you you flatline your cortisol level. So instead of it when in the morning it's high, and then it falls through the day, you're just like this. Most people are uh, a few days short of a um, nervous breakdown, so they really need some help, and whether it's vacation, job, get away from things, right? So, yeah, we all know that person. <laughs> so stress does this. Um, cortisol also causes, um, so if you get cortisol, and you have T4, tells T4 to go to T3 reverse. Okay, so this should happen naturally. So this is our break. This is what we call a negative feedback loop. Okay? So if we're stressed all the time, that, that T4 is getting turned into T3 reverse. So we're just slowing everything down. So there's where, hey, you have a thyroid issue. No, you have an adrenal gland stress issue. Fix the adrenal gland, the thyroid will do its job. Okay? So this is one of the patterns that we'll talk about. Uh, this is your constipation issue. right? Oh, I go once every three days, once a week, once every two weeks. Like, okay, that's not normal, right? So, so this is a good loop if you have to run and hide from something or stay and fight, right? So our, our stress response is really made. We're not that far from our ancestors. We're not that evolved from them. So when they were running from animals or people or staying and fight, trying to run after things, that stress response was there because you want to shut off um, the digestion, so all that blood flow goes to your muscles, so you can actually do something. Okay, so it is, it's a it's a needed loop. God didn't put it in there for no reason. We just now stress in our cars, at our workstations, in our houses, um, without doing any physical activity. So there's your cholesterol increase, your blood pressure increase, your diabetes, all that stuff on those stressed people. So, all right, and very here's an underlooked one. Which I see actually an awful lot. Infections, okay? Specifically, Epstein Barr, mono. 
they actually found um, proteins of the Epstein Barr virus inside thyroids. So this will viruses love to house themselves. The liver is another very popular spot because all that blood flow, right? But yeah, Epstein Barr virus. Uh, somebody comes in, they have a history of mono. I'm checking CBC with differential to see if they have a chronic infection. Um, if you don't, if you don't get rid of this, it doesn't matter what other things we do with them. You got to kill the virus first because that's that uh, will that takes precedence over anything else or any other infection. Could be a bacterial infection as well too. You could have a candida overgrowth, dysbiosis, leaky gut stuff. That takes precedence. You got to kill that stuff before you try to. You can't plant seeds in a, in a weedy garden. Is basically what it means. So. So infection is a big one. The proteins look like, so the, when your body creates antibodies, looks like uh, against this uh, Epstein-Barr virus, looks like thyroid, so hey, there we go. We're just gonna attack our thyroid while we attack this virus as well too. Um, and this often presents as a chronic infection. Most people, they come in, they got something in eyes, they don't sleep very well, they have been fatigued for years. They're like, yeah, you got a virus. Yep. So. All right. Diet, oh, the dreaded diet. Specifically, carbs, sugars, and skipping meals. So one of the caveats with the skipping meals is people, um, intermittent fasting is pretty big, but if somebody's really fatigued, I don't let them do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is for People that um, you know are generally more healthy, in my mind, they can handle you know eating between seven and eleven or uh, seven and eight or sorry eleven and eight or eleven and seven stuff like that. Um, you don't want to give somebody who's got adrenal fatigue or um, thyroid issues. You don't want to tell them, hey, yeah, go ahead and skip breakfast. You yeah, you need protein, you need nutrients. You're nutrient deficient more than likely, so let's start eating some food that's actually real. So that would be bad. Uh, the carbs and sugar, what do they feed? Bad bugs, so there's our candida. Stick out your tongue, it's all white. Probably got a candida issue, your tongue shouldn't be white. Unless you just ate, you know, a donut or something, I guess, <laughs> which would feed the bad bugs, so. Uh, blood sugar spikes up and down. That affects liver, because that's where glucose, gluconeogenesis, that's where glucose is made. What else? Uh, increase in cortisol whenever you eat carbs and sugar. Yay, cortisol. No, it breaks your body down, so it's not good for you. So we don't want to eat carbs and sugar. So in carbs, you know the carbs, right? Don't eat the breads, the pastas, the fake stuff, right? So um, if you're on ketogenic, you know you have you have to be careful with certain vegetables, things like that. Can of carrots, they're high in you know high in the sh carb scale. All right, next one that causes stuff. Thyroidism. Okay. Viral toxins. All right, plastic water bottles, BPA, right? And BPS, that's not any better. Uh, containers, Teflon, uh, pesticides, right? Where do we live? And this farm field next to me, I mean, we spray, we got wind, we're all breathing it in, it's getting in our groundwater, it's not going anywhere. So they pretty much found it in every place, everywhere. You find it in, find it in parts of the Amazon now, so that stuff. Floats up in the air in the atmosphere and just keeps going, so there isn't a place in the U.S. that isn't covered in glyphosate, so. So not a good thing. Uh, heavy metals, another big one, so mercury, lead, Aluminum all can create issues with the thyroid, and the loss. And this, when you get an overload of toxins, you get detoxification issues. Okay, so detoxification occurs in your liver. Uh, Seventy-five percent in your liver, twenty-five percent in your gut. Okay, so we'll talk about why this is important here. And then the last one that really kind of causes thyroid issues, hormone imbalances. One of the big ones. Okay. Because guess what a lot of these environmental toxins act like in your body? Estrogen. So what's called xenoestrogens. 
Uh, BPA acts like estrogen in your body as well too, so we get all that. So guys, um, low testosterone levels, issues like that, they're overloaded on estrogen toxicity issues. So that's a big one. It slows the conversion of T4 to T3, so that, that inactive to active form. Uh, and it also then slows down because estrogen is metabolized in your liver and then you poop it out. Okay, so, so you can see where if you have an estrogen overload and you can't poop, you just get, you're just in your own waste. Just continue to perpetuate the, um, the thyroid dysfunction. So the grand theme of all this is that nowhere did I say that, oh, it's the thyroid itself, right? The thyroid is the canary in the coal mine. Does anybody know what that means? So the, in the old days in the mines, they would send, they'd have a canary in there. If the canary died, time to get out. Okay? So if your thyroid is having difficulties, it means something else larger is going on. You just got to figure out what it is. Is it one of these things? You know, is it an estrogen issue? Usually there's other signs of that. Um, is it toxicity issues? They can't detoxify themselves. They, you know, work in a coal mine or a factory of some sort that they're breathing in stuff. They're, they stir glyphosate with their hand if they're a farmer, things like that, the things that they were told. So, so you really have to look at, you know, are they stressed? Um, looking at a person's timeline of their life. Yep, my parents got divorced when I was 10. You know, somebody died, grandma died when I was 14. I was really close to her. Somebody else, you know, a friend of mine committed suicide. So you just start seeing all these stress kind of issues that people play out and then their health goes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just keeps going down and down and down and finally you know they get to the doctor and they're put on they might have probably already been on an anxiety depression man and the doctor and their TSH finally goes mm -hmm. they're like oh you had thyroid this whole time so so there's where those issues come into it so let's talk about the tests that people should get okay so this is where I bang my head against the wall uh, because when I ask patients, yeah, do you trust your doctor? Will they do what you ask? Will they run what I want them to do? So I tell them to go get a thyroid panel, like a full panel. Um, and what that means is you get your TSH, get your T4 free, T3 free, um, TPO, T, um, antibodies. And I always throw in, because it's the stress one, T3 reverse, okay? So you'll get this one, and you might get that one, okay? So this doesn't tell me anything until the thyroid is really, really bad, right? So T4, I don't know if you have a conversion issue, if, you're, yeah, if your liver is involved, um, you got an estrogen issue, or anything like that. So we need to know what's happening with this. And, you know, do you need to get off gluten because you have antibodies. Okay, something's attacking. So you now have an autoimmune disease, right? Um, or is stress playing too much of a role in your life? Okay? So these, these are just the tests that we have patients get. Um, we run labs through Fairview. They don't have any problems with us running labs. So, so we just have patients do that. These are just a sample. Um, when we sit down with patients, we run, if it's male or female, and they have fatigue and they fill out our forms, that's the section that you're you guys are filling out is for um, thyroid and uh, adrenal gland. So if I see that those are high, I'm like, okay. Um, we also then have them, if they don't want to go do the tests, basal body temp, right? So first thing in the morning, grab that thermometer, stick it in your armpit, see what your temperature is, write it down. Um, you gotta do it before you get out of bed. Should be between 97.1 and 97.6. If it's lower than 97.1, we got a problem, okay? Your body isn't heating up because that's how hot or cold things run. Um, if it's above uh, 97.6, we start thinking that infection, right? Um, ovulation issue, you know, you can ovulate too, but um, so then we ask about that. But if you're, that's why we do it over a couple weeks, man. But if you're constantly, and you know, somebody's wrist is warm and their fingertips are cold and they don't have heart, you know, congestive heart failure, I'm thinking they probably got some, uh, they, got a, they got a thyroid issue. So we start correlating all these. It just gives them more reason to go get the test so that they can look for it. I'm like, yeah. So, so those are the those are the tests that we want to run on patients, or we have run on patients. Uh, I think the most underlooked population is kids. Uh, we find a lot of, especially with diets, find a lot of antibodies in kids. 
and they don't have any ranges for kids. Like I said, if you have antibodies in your body against your thyroid, I don't care if it's 10 or 20, some, some's attacking, it just hasn't got high enough and bad enough at this point in time. So any presence of antibodies means autoimmune to me, we need to stop it, we need to eliminate whatever the problem is. So heal up the gut. Okay, five major patterns. Okay, one, pituitary issues. Okay, this secretes that TSH. Okay. So this happens uh, when you have that stress, the cortisol, so that with that elevated cortisol issue, TSH has an issue. Um, active infections and blood sugar imbalances also cause a lot of this stuff. So once again, you gotta look at the infection. Chronic stress, pregnancy, insulin resistance. So these, uh, these all lead to stre stressing of that um, pituitary gland, so you get that fatigue. So what you, TSH doesn't get produced, um, so you can't tell the, uh, you can't get that T3, T4 being secreted by that thyroid. So what you'll see in the lab would be, this would be low, um, and T4 would also be low in this one. Because if you're not getting, if you're not getting this secreted, T4 is going to be low. Because it's the primary one that's secreted by the thyroid. Okay. Here's one of the most common ones. You get under conversion. Okay, why is this the most common, one of the more common ones? This happens in your liver. Okay. So if you got a bad liver, you got a bad thyroid. You can't convert your T4. Your thyroid's secreting all this T4. You can't convert it, so it just kind of sits around, gets metabolized, and it's just your thyroid keeps secreting it. So, uh, what are some of the things that cause a bad liver? Uh, food, too much carbs. Uh, you're finding non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, right? So people don't have to drink now to kill their livers, they just need to eat food, the wrong foods. Stress will do this as well too. But yeah, so we always look at liver enzymes when people come in, because I need to know if they're converting. If they have a bad liver, they're not converting this, they can't. So their detoxification system is under um, assault. They can't methylate, they can't do some other things. Uh, homocysteine level might be high as well too. So that's a very common one. You obviously would see um, TSH would be normal, T4 would be normal, T3 would be low. That's what you'd see in the lab. So that's why you gotta run it. So if you don't have a thyroid problem, well, why do I feel like this? Well, oh, you got anxiety, you got depression, you're stressed, right? Well, yeah, okay. Does that make sense? That's why the liver plays an important role in your thyroid health. So you can get an elevated increase in, it's called thyroid, oops, yeah, binding globulin. Okay, so this binds up your thyroid hormone. So if this increases, if you're producing too much thyroid, this is good. Um, if, if you have an increase in this, uh, you would actually then start to slow down your thyroid production. It can't be used by the body when it gets bound. So one of the big things with this, estrogen. Darn females, and males now. Uh, obesity. These two usually are hand in hand. Because where do we like to pack estrogen? Right through here, guys and girls. Bird control. So all those 13 year olds with heavy menstrual periods, cramping, oh, we know how to control it. Oh, I got acne on 16 year olds. Oh, we know how to do it. This will help. Just mess up your hormones and give you birth control. So then we'll mess up your thyroid for the next few years. Uh, estrogen replacement. Did a huge study on the on forty eight thousand nurses, um, the hormone replacement thing. A lot of heart disease, a lot of them died. So, uh, not a, necessarily a good thing because we're having we're not we're not addressing what the problem is with the estrogen replacement. So, 
So what you would see in this would be TSH and T4 normal. And then you have T3 low, thyroid binding globulin. So you can run this test too, it would be high of course. And there's a T3 uptake test. Be high. So, so there's there's where you want to really start looking at that stuff. Um, I, if you're not on the birth control pill for other than prevention, get off it. Figure out what the problem is, why you have acne. Okay, you probably have a bad liver. You're allergic to something. There's other reasons for it. You know, change up your diet. Um, if it's for heavy menstrual cramping, things like that, there's other ways to work. Fish oil works on 50% of the people. Uh, Vitex is another uh, great form. It's called Chaseberry. Uh, German studies show that it's about 85% effective. So I'm thinking I'm giving somebody that rather than that. And then figuring out why they have issues with their, their hormones there. So. What causes cysts on the ovaries? Too much estrogen. Too much estrogen? Yep. Yep, toxins. You're not, so, you, so when the thyroid starts showing up, then you'll start to see these other things show up after that. That's why it's the canary in the coal mine, because you can't clear your estrogens if your digestion slows down. So then they're just gonna float around. So, so why does the doctor put the person on birth control then? Because that's the, that's the only tool they have in their toolbox. So. So they did the wrong thing. If they they did what they felt was right. But that's just making a bigger mess, right? In essence, you're not addressing the problem, no. You're, you're, do, you're, you're addressing the symptom, but not the problem. So there's where the thyroid, where if you give, you're given levothyroxine or um, Synthroid, so you, you're, you're trying to address a problem, but not getting to the root cause of what the problem is. They're not looking deeper into it, so. Because, like I said, if they're only running the, T, the TSH and the T4, and it finally goes up, um, the range for TSH used to be 0 to 3.5, and now it's 0 to 5. Um, I know that endocrinologists were up in arms about it, and pharmacists were up in arms about it. They are like, why are we increasing this range? Oh, no, we're fine. The people are fine. They're not showing any signs of it until it's above 5. Well, I t so when people come in, oh, I'm in the normal range. I'm like, just show me your blood work, okay? And I can tell you whether or not it's in the optimal range. Because when you start getting out of optimal, you start even heading towards disease, right? And when you're outside of normal rates, you now have a disease. And now you will be placed on a medication for some sort, for some reason, okay? So wouldn't it make sense to look at the patterns that people are developing before they have to get onto a medication? So you can do an intervention that would be much more easier on them and effective than it is to wait for them to have 25 years worth of PPI use or... Um, Crohn's disease or something else that they had. So, so there's the issues where you start looking at blood work and everybody comes back. I'm in normal range. I'm in normal range. Like no, you just didn't look hard enough. So, so the elevated so decreased. So you can actually have a decrease in thyroid binding globulin. So, so there uh, high levels. Yep. So, so this is this equals uh, resistance. So. In a type two diabetic, you're just you're just flush full of insulin, and your your in your cells have these little receptors for insulin and other <coughs> hormones too. So when this is high, you have a ton of um, thyroid hormone rolling around. So the receptors get full, and they're like, "Oh, we don't need you anymore." So we become resistant. It's just like um, if there's too much insulin, uh, there's there's the receptors just become numb to all the insulin that's around. Like, well, I don't really need to do anything. We got plenty here, so I'm just going to shut down. So then that's what insulin resistance is for. So you become thyroid resistant as well. So this one you see in okay. high testosterone and androgens is a big one uh, because you'll see PCOS, you get um, insulin resistance and um, androgens. So, so that's where uh, androgens are the testosterone, the male hormones. Um, not very good on in females a lot of times. So, you'll see uh, high T3 uh, and low 
to me, that thyroid binding globulin. So there's the, the big ones. And the last one, thyroid resistance. So this is the tricky one. Everything seems normal, but they, uh, they have all the signs of it. So they come in, you know, like, what's going on? Um, this is where that, that receptor site <coughs> resistance is there. So they can't utilize that gas, that T3. So it's trying to get to the cells and be utilized, and they just can't. So you, you need to improve. Um, this is usually when people are very acidic. And acid is only good in one spot, stomach, and some of the intestinal tract. But if you're acidic in the blood, not good. It really shuts things down, because what likes to live in acid? One of the most common. One in two male, females and one in three males will get it. Cancer. So if you're, at, if you're overly acidic, you know, you do that first morning urine and you're way below five, yeah, you're peeing out acid. Not good. You know, you're, you're in the middle of the day, you should be a neutral, and you're at a five. Not good. So you're too acidic. So, Is that just like a urine testing? Mm -hmm. Yep, you can just do a UA and you get the, the pH. First morning urine would be good because you should be around, a, you should be more acidic in the morning, but as the day goes on, somebody's doing a mid-afternoon, you know, test for me, and they're at a five, I'm like, all right. You know, you're in the range, but, you know, you should be, <laughs> you, sh you shouldn't be that acidic. So, so we got to, you got to eat dietary changes, right? So too much, uh, too many things that are causing sugar would be number one, right? Sugar causes a lot of acid in people. Not acidic and not, so it's not acid fruit or anything like that. This is, this is toxins like sugar. That'd be the big one. So if we can reduce their carb intake, get them to eat more healthy fats, things like that. Real food, let's just eat real food, people. That's what it is, all right? So yeah, that's, you have to improve the alkalinity inside the body. Um, you, don't want to, you don't want alkalinity in the stomach. That's why I said the one place definitely you want acid is the stomach. All right, uh, so we talked about gluten. That's another, this is one of the other issues that people have um, in that leaky gut. You guys can go back. We we videotaped the other two, um, the two parts on the um, gut health. So starting from the top, I split it up into um, two different sections of the of the digestive tract. Um, vegetable oils. Reading a very interesting book called um, Nourishing Fats: Why Animal Fats Are Good for You. Things like butter, lard, things that we used to use. It's really interesting how how um, Crisco came to be, where it was used as a like a degreaser. Um, and then they didn't need it anymore because they found better ways, um, cheaper ways to do things, and so they turned it into a cooking. <laughs> so used for cooking. So yeah, it really was not used for cooking at first. So ingenuity at its best. And then the vegetable oils came in, and the studies that they ran weren't very good. And so um, yeah, it's very interesting. The whole sugar, sugar industry paid off. Um, the uh, FDA. And the USDA to say that fats were bad for you and sugar was fine. And now what do we got? We got fatter and more disease than we did. We just would have stayed eating the uh, bacon and eggs every morning. It would have been just fine. So, so yeah, vegetable oils are a big one. Dairy um, that's been pasteurizes that causes inflammation. So if you can get raw dairy, awesome. Goat's milk, really good. Uh, inflammation leads to le uh, autoimmune disease. So there's your thyroid disorder, Hashimoto's. Um, we talked about the gluten issue there. So, all right. So, what do we need to do? So, we talked about causes. How about solutions? Kind of talked about eating real food, right? But first, you know, you got to get tested to so see if you have some of this stuff fully. So, if you go, well, I've had my thyroid tested. What did you have? Well, I had my teeth. So, if they pull, if, my chart is a good thing now. I do like it because everybody pulls it up on their their phone if they remember their login. Um, <laughs> so, so you look through and yeah, I had it tested. Um, I just, so you look at it and you're like, yeah, you had your TSH tested and you pull it up and it's like a three. I'm like, yeah, you're, you're in the midst of hypothyroidism. Yeah, you're way too high. So uh, normal levels below, below two for sure um, for a TSH. So yeah, you definitely want to get tested fully. So that's your T3, T4, 
antibodies, those things. Um, 16 year old, a um, couple months ago, he had a 95 on his antibodies, should be below 30. So, wonder why he doesn't like to get up to go to school every morning. And, you know. So, so there's there's issues with that. And like I said, um, those people are starting to get easier and easier to pick out when they come in. You just they sunk it in eyes. They don't sleep very well. You know, they wash their hair and they get a clump of hair in their hands. Like, okay, that's not so good. So let's figure that. Let's go get some testing. Uh, like I said, the medical community usually will only do TSH and a T4. So um, that doesn't give you the full picture, obviously, because there's many other different things that you need to do. Test the fully. Next one, heal the gut. I have a question. Please. Um, so raw milk is unpasteurized? Yeah. Yeah, it hasn't gone through the pasteurization. So, so the thing with raw milk is it has the bacteria in there that you can help break down the proteins, the casein protein especially. Uh, and when you look at the um, USDA website, and it, tell, it can tell you, you can pull up how many people got sick from unpasteurized milk, raw milk. And they'll give you a number, and then how many people got sick from pasteurized milk. And it's usually higher. It is almost always higher. It's almost spot on. It's, you know, within 50 people. So there you go. Back, Take your pick. Back in the day that I was at school, yep. as growing up as kids, we were not supposed to drink unpasteurized yeah. anything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. I did it. My relatives are all farmers yep. and they yeah, well, milk yeah. the cow and yep. yeah. pour milk, some in right? the pitcher and good fat. it in the refrigerator. It was good. So, so when, when cows go out and eat grass and then you drink the milk from that straight out of there, that whole milk, what do you think's in their fat? In that fat that you just drink? The omega-3s that are from that grass. Just like when a fish eats the seaweed and we go eat that fish, we're getting a, we're getting a concentration of that seaweed in there. So you can eat all the seaweed. You can eat seaweed and get omega threes. You just got to eat a lot of seaweed. Whereas if you eat some fish, it's concentrated in that fat. Just like we concentrate toxins, they concentrate the that um, seaweed in there, those oils in there, um, for us. That's why fish oil is good for you. So feel free to hunker down on any vegetables. Good for good for iodine, I guess you could say. <laughs> Unless you're allergic to it, so you, you know, hunker yeah. down on a lot of. Hungering down on a lot of seaweed. The what? The, the, well, when we used to work at our other job, uh, some people eat them and they heat them up in the microwave. And you, you seaweed? Don't wanna, yeah, you don't want to walk in the lunchroom yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, you probably should be eating it more of a, like, like a um, salad type thing. So. Okay, uh, so heal the gut. So things to avoid. So gluten, dairy. Soy, sugar. Okay. This is what we put, try to get people to get off of for at least six months while we do this. If they continue to do this, that won't happen. Because they're <coughs> allergic to one of the sugar is going to feed bad bugs. Um, and sugar, they can get their sugar from their, veg, their fruits, right? So dark chocolates, that's fine. Um, you got to give them a little bit of a fix. But yeah. So these are the things you want to avoid. Dairy, we're not cows, you know, we don't drink, we're not, we don't drink. We're the only other animal than a cow that drinks milk, so. Eating fresh vegetables, right? Fresh veggies. Organic meats. Sorry, this should also be organic, right? Because of the pesticides. Uh, if you can eat wild caught fish, this is getting to be really, really hard because in the Arctic Circle they're finding um, heavy metals in the fish there. So, do you know if they don't have it in there? I mean, what kind of fish can you get? Because I know fish, but I still am not sure what to get. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's where it's caught, so that's the the hard part. Is um, as much as because we're in Minnesota, it's going to be flowing in from you know the coast typically. Um, even in Alaska, you're getting off you know, all that debris in there and garbage. So, so it's still an issue. You don't want, you don't want to eat the farm stuff because that's they feed it uh, um, corn, and corn isn't a good thing. So avoiding corn would be another thing. So sorry, corn, corn. That's why you see it in the toilet. 
How do you know if it's fine fish? Does it say? Uh, it was, if, it's, if it doesn't say organic wild caught. Oh, okay. Yep. Just assume that it's a, it's a um, farm, fry, farm fish. All right. So what else should we eat? Healthy fats, right? Coconut oils, fish oils, avocados, olive oil, uh, organic butter, yay, whatever the, just think of the circle of life. Whatever the animal eats, you're going to get, okay? So if the animal's eating corn, you're going to get corn. If the animal gets an antibiotic, you're getting an antibiotic. If the animal gets a hormone, you're getting a hormone. If the animal's allowed to go out there and eat bugs, you're going to get whatever that bug is made of, yay. So just in a more concentrated form. Yeah, chickens should chickens like bugs. They don't like feed. They want to go eat bugs. So, so if you have a garden, put a chicken coop around there. They love to eat the bugs. They like to eat your your vegetables. So that's good. One way to feed them. Uh, we talked about the seaweed for iodine, kefir, organic goat's milk, uh, some organic goat's milk yogurt. You can get yogurt now. Kimchi if you really like to make the stinky stuff. Um, kombucha, you got to be careful with this one. If you can make your own, it's better. Um, a lot of the other stuff has got a lot of sugar in it. Natto is another good one. Sauerkraut, of course. So those are all the stinky stuff that we don't eat anymore in our diets. So what do you have to take instead? Probiotic, right? Uh, we like to use so some of the some of the other things we like to use. Glutamine is great for your gut lining. So this is amino acid. Colostrum. So when you were born, the first thing you should have gotten for food was colostrum, right? This heals and seals up your gut, so that's why. Then you get the milk second. So colostrum is uh, the same among all mammals. So you can get colostrum from a, from a cow, a whatever mammal there is, as long as you can, you can bottle that and you can drink that. So if you know a farmer and they have colostrum, feel free to hunker down on that. So. Um, we have it in a powder form that you mix in, it tastes a lot better. <laughs> so, but some, I had buddies in, in school that, yep, that's, they saw it in a bodybuilding magazine and they drank colostrum because, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger and those guys drank colostrum because then it would help their, their recovery because it, you recover better if you have a healthier gut. You digest better if you have a healthier gut. So colostrum helps that, with that. Decreases inflammation, so if you decrease inflammation in your muscles and your digestive tract, you can recover faster, you can lift more and, and more often. Uh, we use probiotics. So, when you look for a probiotic, you look for the, so if it says lactobacillus um, NCFM. So you want to see the parentheses, you want to see strain specific. Because each strain does something different, it populates a different area, it uh, is involved in a different process in the body. So when we're, we're talking about healing the gut, um, one of the other big ones is actually a yeast called S. Pilardi. Think of that as the glue that will give people, so if they got to think you got, we use that. Uh, what, what vitamin is low in, I would just say every autoimmune disease? What's it? D. Yep, vitamin D. Okay. Involved in 3,000 reactions in your body. So if you have an autoimmune disease, I know you have vitamin D deficiency. So uh, you probably have poor digestion too because you're not digesting your fat, um, fats very well. Uh, so we use digestive enzymes, uh, bile salts. About 50% of women in Minnesota have um, gallbladder um, surgery, right? So people come in, do you have a gallbladder? No. Oh. Okay. So I know you have poor digestion, stomach acid, digestive issues. So we need to, you need to be supported there because once you take the gallbladder out, you're no longer getting that concentrated bile that'll, that is used to uh, break down your fats, uh, break down your estrogen. It's actually antimicrobial for your digestive tract uh, and helps get, you, helps get rid of your cholesterol. So when gallbladders go, cholesterol goes up. Estrogen goes up. So cancer goes up. So... Uh, reducing inflammation in that gut, we use uh, turmeric uh, a lot. Turmeric is very, very good at reducing inflammation. 
uh, omega-3, so the fish oil is very, very good for healing the gut up. Um, and then a cool product we have is called um, SPM. So when you eat a fish, when you eat fish oil or eat fish, the omega-3s have to go through a bunch of different um, pathways so that they get down to where it would be an anti-inflammatory because that's what a fish oil is. It's food for your brain and, and anti-inflammatory. for. That's why it's, it's good for your heart and good for your gut because it reduces inflammation in the body. Um, this is the end product of that anti-inflammatory. So if you have an unhealthy person, or yeah, if you don't protect it, so a fish oil, if you're not giving them some antioxidants um, help, their, their um, fish oil can get into the wrong pathway and actually be inflammatory, be turned into inflammatory too. So there's where this will, is the end product. So you give it to them and it's actually very good. I've been shown in a whole host of um, inflammatory conditions to be um, very, very helpful. So people tolerate this really, really well. So I like to use this product as well. Uh, making the thyroid hormone, we talked about selenium, so our Brazil nuts. We use a product called Thyroid Pro because it's got uh, selenium, zinc, uh, some tyrosine in there, so it's got all the backbones that you need in there. Um, if you're, it's got some glandulars in there. If you're a vegetarian, then we have a product called Thyrosol because I do have a couple of patients that are vegetarians that have thyroid issues, and so they need to... They need to supplement with a pea protein that has some amino acids add, added to it and um, take a different product for their, for their selenium issues. So, uh, so we do have that option, but most people do really well. Got a question. How much is the test to get it all done? Um, I don't know. Um, way more than it should be, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, I'm hoping uh, the next couple months to be able to just get a, a wholesale account with um, Quest. And then, so then, really what happens is the tests are, are you know, anywhere from 10 to 50 bucks on average, uh, but then you get the upcharge, right? You get the medical upcharge. So a $50 test turns into a $250 test, a $10 test turns into a $80 test. So there's that upcharge that they're doing. So if I can just send somebody with the orders to a blood draw for 25 bucks, um, and they just pay the 25 bucks and the lab fee, whatever, that's fine. I don't need to. I don't need to make money on the lab fee. I just they're paying for my time to sit down and talk to me about the lab results. That's really what it amounts to. The information. So I don't need to make. I don't think anybody should be making money on that part. So pay the lab tech. You know, pay the doctor the the fee that you talk to them about. You know, after you're done, like okay, this is what it means. But if you're normal, you just you know you might not even get a call, right? Or you get a call that says, oh, everything looks normal, or a or a. You get the letter in the mail two weeks later, it says, oh, your labs look normal. And they bring to me, and I said, no, they're not normal. You're anemic, you are got thyroid disorder, whatever it is. So, so those are the things. Because you would, there's a reason for your symptoms, right? That should be the caveat. If your lab ranges are normal, figure out what the problem is then. Whether it's um, stuff that is in an optimal range, B vitamin deficiency, selenium deficiency, whatever it is. It's, there's too many people that come in that have symptoms, um, and they could be off the wall. The hard ones are they got a gut infection and they have you know joint pain, right? Okay. Now I got to try to convince the person that they have a gut infection um, that's causing their joint pain because they move fine. They swell. They might have swelling stuff, and so they got inflammation all over. And they might have some IBS issues. Yeah, I can get constipated, and like, okay, you got gut issue. Let's figure that out. Um, because I can adjust somebody to I'm blue in the face and they're not going to get any better because we're not addressing the real cause, right? So that's why this extra step really comes in. Because people are coming in, 15 years ago, it was easy because people weren't coming in with all this chronic illness and now they're coming in with all this stuff for the last, you know, the last five years especially. So you have to do these extra steps to help people get better. Um, like I said, you get a 16-year-old in here and they got low back pain and they got an estrogen issue. So they got constipation, okay? They don't, they don't equate constipation and low back. Like, same area, you're all bloated, you know? Does your pants fit a little tighter? You gain a little bit of weight? So, so making some correlations and getting them to think about it. All right, uh, zinc, that, that's needed for that T4 to T3 conversion, tyrosine, so those are the big ones. Um, cortisol Pro, stress, the number one thing that drives in, 85% of people into the doctor. So it's a component of stress. So we use Cortisol Pro, uh, we have people fill out a stress identity questionnaire. 
Uh, it can give us whether they're stressed and tired, stressed and wired, stressed and mentally fatigued. So we can use different formulas. I, use, I like to use Licorice Plus. There's some licorice in there and some ashwagandha. Very good for helping support the adrenal gland and making feel people just feel better. Um, obviously, then you have to get to the root cause of what their stress is. Uh, I've only told a couple people to quit their jobs, but sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> like, where's it all coming from? You gotta quit. You gotta figure it out. You gotta find something new because it's killing you. So no job is worth that. No job is worth your health. But so so that's a big one. Just getting to people's stress. If they had some emotional issue, yeah, you need to go get some counseling. That's huge. I'm not a counselor. We refer people out to that. So dealing with those issues is very good. Um, yeah, especially as you start to talk to people and they, they break down. Like, yeah, we need to deal with this. This is somebody, nobody's addressing it. You just can't give somebody a pill and not address that stuff. So that's bad. Uh, meditation, very good. There's apps for meditation. There's YouTube videos to help you work on meditation, right? Yoga is really good. Um, and we talked about the adaptogens as well. Improving energy is fatigue, right? They're all coming in with fatigue. What is the big one? B12, right? So you get those people coming in and they uh, have B12s in under 100. Like those people aren't feeling good at all. It's, uh, it's pulling teeth. <laughs> That'd be like one of the first things. You know, check, their, check their iron, you know, their anemia, ferritin is what we check because that shows up quicker. And check their iron and iron binding capacity and then check a B12 and a vitamin D. You put somebody on a B12 and they start feeling better, there you go. But then you figure out why they're not absorbing B12. So that's usually that stomach acid issue. So we start working on their digestion. Magnesium, how many people hunker down on 37 pounds of kale? Not a lot. So magnesium deficiencies, it's not in the ground anymore. We've used up all the usable farmland. In 1950, there's only about 7% left. I'm sure that's probably less now. So uh, we're not doing that sustainable farming. We're not re-putting stuff back into the system. Uh, carnosine is very good for um, energy production. Uh, taurine is also very good. It's also um, been shown here recently in a study to actually help re... So over the nerve, there's what's called the myelin sheath. That's what the signal goes down. And so in MS, that sheath goes away. So that's why they start losing the feeling um, in their hands and stuff. So taurine has actually been shown to re-myelinate the... So that's pretty cool. So they, it's um, a potential... Uh, treatment for people with MS. So just figuring out dosage wise and things like that. So that's very cool. Uh, when you have high cortisol level, you have low <coughs> DHEA. Okay. DHEA, um, great for, te needed for testosterone. So you get this balancing act, cortisol, DHEA. So cortisol is too high, DHEA starts to drop. So you do a cortisol to DHEA ratio. We do, um, we use a lab called BioHealth Labs, spit in the bile. So you use saliva to do it, works really well. Um, you can get stress hormones, estrogen hormones, uh, testosterone, things like that. So you can do a full uh, panel where you don't have to go into blood, you just spit in the bile too. So that's good. Uh, so you want to reduce those cortisol. We talk about meditation, DHEA. Uh, proving the, so. Everybody should be doing this twice a year. A metabolic detox. Okay. And we'll do a seminar on this as well, too. So metabolic detox, detoxification, detoxification system, 75% through your liver. The short, the short uh, answer to this, uh, you have two phases in your liver, phase one and phase two. Phase three is down in through your kidney. So Whatever is filtered in through phase one gets actually made worse before it gets to phase two because um, you add some things to products like estrogen, um, BPA, other toxins, so the stuff we put on our hair skin, what we clean our house with, things like that. So that's actually made worse before it's made better into um, phase two. That phase two is where you bind it with um, methylation. So, so there's, uh, we'll talk about this too, during that, but you can have what's called the MTHFR gene mutation where you don't methylate very good. Um, that's getting way down the rabbit hole, but anyway, so that phase two, what happens is phase two gets sluggish. So then you get all this back of all this bad stuff and it's gonna go somewhere because that liver's got what? A ton of blood going through it. So if you go to bed between the hours of nine and 11 and you wake up between the hours of one and three nightly, it's your liver, okay? So look at your liver. That's, um, that's usually a big cause. Colon's next. 
and then kidneys after that. So every kind of two hours is what it amounts to. So if you're waking up from those things. So even if he, so, because if, if, you're, if you're waking up in the middle of the night to pee, that means you never hit REM sleep, so, because you shouldn't be producing urine during those three hours. So, so you should be in the paralytic stage. So you shouldn't be producing any urine during that time. So a metabolic detox is not a cleanse. Cleanse would be, I give you some mag citrate or our intestinal cleanse or a vitamin C flush. You're washing out the colon so we can replant in the intestinal tract to replant um, good bugs is what, we'll, what we do. So um, vitamin C flush is very effective also to determine how vitamin C deficient are you? Are you close to scurvy or what? So, so that's a good one that we'll do with patients. Uh, so we use we use uh, UltraClear and AdvaClear. So AdvaClear downregulates phase one, so it doesn't get overly active, and upregulates phase two. The Shake Mix um, has uh, all the factors for phase two in there to help upregulate it as well too. So I drink the shakes, uh, take the pills. We do sometimes we do a seven day detox. If somebody comes in, I'm like, you got to do a seven day detox. Hit it hard. They want to feel better. They're all gung ho. They've felt sick long enough. They just want to get. They just want to get feeling better. You can get somebody feeling really good in about seven days. Um, there's a 10-day detox and a 28-day detox too. But um, I usually push for the seven-day because people can do something really hard for seven days. Um, so that's what I usually do. The 10 days has some intense in a, in the middle of it, but um, I really like to get a quick change because people, when they notice a quick change, they stay on things. They're like, oh yeah, I feel good. Let's continue to do this. So. You hit them hard with it. Also, heavy metal detoxification. You have what's called methionine in you, so that's really good. Uh, remove your dental fillings. Amalgam, right? So they're, if they wear away and they're full of mercury, they're, you're not spitting it out. You're absorbing it in, right? So, so getting those metal fillings out of there, use a dentist that uh, knows what they're doing. So a bio-organic uh, dentist. So they suit up. Use a vacuum, take out only a couple at a time, typically. So uh, that's what I would do if I were you. Uh, and then eat antioxidant-rich um, anti foods. You know, berries are the big one. We use a product called Dynamic Greens, really, really good. 20 servings of fruits and vegetables for those people that don't really like to eat 20 servings of fruits and vegetables. So that improves it. Uh, and then improving your hormone balance. So we use Estrium. So this is what these what these products are. They're medical foods. So they were tested by the FDA for the specific person. They're sort of actually used in studies on humans. Yay, not rats. Um, for the specific pur purpose. So this one was for that detox, metabolic detox. Um, and up until probably three, four years ago, uh, if you talked to any medical doctor about a detox, they would laugh you in the face. And now they're like, oh, you need to. Now the functional medicine doctors are all like, oh, you need to do this metabolic detox, and detox, detoxification system, methylation. So it's all this big thing because of the genetic um, variations that people have. So, so that's a big one. Uh, estrogen, really good uh, for hormone balancing, getting that estrogen metabolism up. We use a couple products. Uh, indole 3 carbonyl, really good for um, when, you, when you have hormone issues. Your body has three different pathways for estrogen. Uh, a 2, 4, and a 16 pathway. The 2 is the pathway we want, yay, the safe one. The 4 is our cancer one, that's the bad one, and that's the one that um, dry, is driven by birth control pills. Uh, and the 16 is our like dementias, osteoporosis, connective tissue disorders, things like that. Um, and you can do a test on your ratios of those to see which, to me, would be a better test than anything else. Um, if, you have, if, you have, if you have a high instance of... Um, cancer in your family, the, like breast cancers, estrogen cancers, you want to be on this twice a year. And you want to get rid of your plastic water bottles, cook with ceramic, um, what else? Try not to touch too much receipt paper, that's another big major one. Receipt paper is full of BPA, you absorb it as soon as you touch it. So um, stay away from hand sanitizer, very bad, because that increases your absorption of any toxic chemical. Triclosan does, woo, really good. Um, that's why they banned it finally. I mean, Minnesota was the first state, but you know, it's gonna take, it's like 2024. Just don't quit making it, take it out. Uh, so that's good. Uh, calcium D glucurate. This is, that other, this is what stops birth control pills, um, or birth control pills stops the production of that. So that's in your gut. 
So when you don't do that, that sends it down the four pathway, potentially for cancers. So uh, phytonutrients, um, we talked about the dynamic greens, green tea, turmeric, cruciferous vegetables. The thing, um, uh, nobody did ask about that, so. So vegetable wise, uh, there, there is some talk with like cruciferous vegetables and thyroid disorders, not eating things like broccoli. Um, it's only if you're already iodine deficient. So if you're iodine deficient, then you need to boost that iodine up because that's cruciferous vegetables deplete the iodine. So, so there's where that is, but most, not a lot of people are iodine deficient. So figuring that out, that's where it is. So, all right. Um, any questions?